Hello, welcome in everyone. This is Sapphire and today we're going to be learning how to rig a 2D model in live 2D cubism. This is going to be the first part of a long series of how to basically rig a half body from torso about the hips slash torso up for a 2D VTuber. If you have not done the art for your VTuber yet or you're still trying to figure out how to organize the Photoshop layer files, go ahead and click this video I will leave down below on how to do that or you can click the card up above. This first part is going to be how to set up your file in live 2D cubism. So it's going to be all the basic and all the essentials that you will do before every single model that you start on Live 2D Cubism. So I would highly recommend if you don't have one already, get a piece of paper and a pencil and write down these steps. I'm going to have them up in the corner for you to see what step we're on and what we're doing. And they'll also be marked in the chapters down below. But these steps are essential every time before you start your model, before you start rigging. So that's what we're focusing on. We will not do rigging quite yet in this section, but we are going to set up our file. And in the next video, we will start working on rigging. All right, let's go. You're going to want to go to live 2d cubism i will drop this link down below this is the website and you want to download the trial version if you have not done this already you could also buy it i think i pay about 20 to 30 usd per month you can buy a full year license if you already went through your trial but you should have 42 days worth of trial if you don't so you will go ahead and download this in order to gain access to the downloads you're going to have to check this box here and then you can download if you have mac or windows or whatever you use so i'm just going to download windows and the exe should download and once that's good to go, we'll click that so it will open up. We're going to go next. I agree. And go ahead and download it where you want it to be. You're going to click Live 2D Cubism Editor and it should launch up. Awesome. So we're going to talk about the essential parts to setting up a live 2D file. Again, you want to do this before every single mod model that you do, or if you bring the file in new, you'll have to do it as well. Again, if you're using Photoshop, it should update. If you drag your Photoshop file in, it should update all the layers and everything automatically and keep track of that. As for other programs like Player Alpaca or Paint Tool Sci or Krita, I'm not sure if those actually work with live 2D. I've talked to a few people already about it. And as far as I know, I'm not sure which our programs actually do work with live 2d but i do know that photoshop works so if you end up making a model in another program and you don't have photoshop see if you have a friend with photoshop and you can send them all your layers and have them organize it and then send you back the photoshop file to drag into live 2d otherwise you can test to see if your art program file works i'm not sure and i will not be able to help you with that because i do not use those programs i'll be doing this based off of photoshop so step number one is to create a file for the model so we're just going to go over to file new so what I'm going to do is I will go back so I can show you to my Photoshop file here. And for those who are wondering what size to make your Photoshop file, I did 3000 pixels by 3065 pixels. So I'm just going to write that out here so you can see it. Be sure that it's pixels. So mine's about this. Again, it doesn't matter too much, but the, I found this to be a good size for me. Works well. And if you want to make a bigger full body model, you could probably just start with that and then expand the canvas down here with your crop tool. You could sort of open that down and work on the other ends but that's what i got for this so we're gonna go to file export or not export sorry save as save to my computer and i'm just gonna save it as my photoshop file on my desktop i'm gonna click save okay so as i was saying earlier you go to file new model then you can go down to canvas settings change this to 3000 by 3065 okay and i'm gonna zoom out here with my scroll wheel and now we got all of our folders here and what i want to do is go to wherever i saved that photoshop file and i'm gonna click and drag and not create a new model but you do untitled model and add all layers as a new art mesh okay Next, I am going to, this is, it's going to show a large folder with everything in your Photoshop file. Here mine is, 2D size Star Guardian. I'm going to drop this down and I'm going to go ahead and turn off this background layer. You can use eyeballs over here to turn on and off layers. And what I'm going to also do is hold Control A to select every single thing so I can move it together and just move that down to the bottom. And if you wanted to make it bigger, you can also hold Shift to keep it all the same size while dragging at the corner. So I'm just going to make it as big as I think I want it. All right. And now I'm going to click control S to save and I'm going to go on my desktop and actually I'll show you. You can also go here, save as desktop and I'm going to do new folder, Saya Star Guardian 3.0. Zero. And I'm going to name this the same thing. Saya Star Guardian 3.0. Okay, save. Awesome. Now it should be in there on my desktop. Okay, so the most important part that we're going to be doing next is you're going to be assigning parts to everything on your layers on the left side here. So we're going to want to go through everything from top 
top to bottom. You do this with every single model that you load into Live 2D after you make the new model, like the steps I showed you earlier. And what we're gonna do is go through everything and give them parts and I'll show you what that means here. So first we're gonna go to our brow section. So I'm gonna go to eyebrow left and now you wanna go to part and see where it says part brow. We want to, this is everything that's within my folder. You wanna make sure you're assigning it to the folders that are in Live 2D. So you're gonna wanna scroll probably all the way close to the bottom for browse in here. And I'm gonna select browse to part. So now you see this is in this solo folder over here, eyebrows L. So we're gonna go through everything and assign it parts. So same thing for eyebrow R, brow. I'm gonna scroll down and put it to the brow folder in here. And you can double check these by highlighting over them and just checking and make sure the part is correct. And I'm gonna do that with the rest of everything. I'm gonna speed up this section of the video, but if you would like to to see how I'm placing everything, you can go to the bottom of this YouTube video and slow down the playback so you can see what I'm doing. And we will talk about how to make sure all your layers are correct after we assign parts. So just focus on assigning parts to every single layer first. All right, let's go. For the loose hair, I'm gonna assign it to the bangs. You can do full hair sides at once. You can do the whole folder. So I'm just gonna select on the folder here and I'm gonna go down to hair side. So I don't want anything to mess up. So I'm just gonna pull all this out into the main folder here and make sure it's all assigned to hair side. And then I'm gonna delete that by clicking the delete key on my keyboard and getting rid of that folder. For ears, you're gonna bring that into the ear section, whether they're wolf ears, if they're wolf ears, semen ears, if you have both, you can put all those into the ear part. Another great thing that you can do to help yourself figure things out if I'm not explaining things clear enough to you is if you go to the Live 2D website, you can go to the download section and go to sample data. And once you get to sample data, you can scroll down and you can download one of the models they have used. Most of them are not English. However, there is an, one English version, Hitori or Hiyori Chan. You can download the pro version. This, it should say underscore EN for English. You can show in folder. You can right click. You can extract to Hitori. And and you can open that folder and then you should be able to go in and click on that orange file and you can have it open up in your live 2d cubism if you want to open it directly next to it so you have two tabs to flip back and forth just open it through directly through live 2d so as you can see i have hitori pro and then i opened it here and now i have two tabs i can flip back and forth between so if you get confused on anything for example there's something that was confusing to me was i don't understand the eye parts there is an eye part there is an eyeball and there's a regular eye so all this stuff should go in the eyeball root section it looks like when I'm looking at the sample model. So when we go back, we know for our eye section that we want to put all this stuff into the eyeball part of the folder. So I'm going to right click all those and scroll down and go to eyeball. I'm going to go back up to this head, eyes, and grab all my left eyes as well and bring those into the eyeball as well. Here we go again. Now we're at the chest. I'm not exactly sure to put the chest. So I'm going to look in here and see where they put the chest in the sample one. So it looks like the neck is with the neck. I'm going to go through here, body. It looks like collarbone. Anything with the chest is going to go in the body section as well. So I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to go ahead and move that to the body. And lastly, I'm going to move the hair back to the hair back. Now I'm just going to double check all my folders up here to make sure they're empty. It looks like wolf ears are still in wolf ears, so I'm going to have to move those down to ears. 
Again, I'm just double checking everything. It looks like all this stuff is good. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and collapse that folder and we should be done with our PSD file. Now, as you can see, all of our layers are really messed up over here. We want to get everything back on the same order. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to start going through and moving stuff to different draw orders. So draw order is like layers in Photoshop. The higher the draw order, then it will be more on top and the lower it will be more below or underneath. So I'm going to go through and I'm just going to order stuff accordingly. The face and the nose, everything for that looks good. I'm going to move forward for the eyes. I'm going to go ahead and select all these and I'm going to turn it up to 508 is fine and put it on top. For those who are wondering how I'm selecting all, I just click one and I hold down shift and I click down to select more than one. Now I'm going to go to my eyebrows. I'm going to select both of those and I'm just going to pull the draw order up as well. And I'm probably going to want that a little bit up more. Just it doesn't really specifically matter which draw order as long as it's in the correct layer that you want. For mouth, we're going to select all those as well. We're going to move the draw order up. We might need to go back and adjust some of those when we're working on stuff later, but we have the main section good to go. I'm going to go ahead and move this nose to the nose section as well. I forgot to do that or mess that up earlier, which means I'm also going to want to move the draw order and the nose up as well. Next, I'm going to go to the ears. I'm going to select both of those. Those are going to be, mm, we're going to keep them behind. So I'll just pull that back a little bit. And next we're going to go to our bangs and we want all of our bangs pretty far forward. So I'm going to select all those, move them up to about there. I want the eyebrows to stay on top of the bangs. For hair side, I'm also going to select all these and move them up. And for hair back, I want that to go behind. So everything else looks like it's pretty good. I think I just need to grab my golden choker and move that on top. And now we have everything in the correct drawing order. Again, we can move stuff over if we need to, if something's not overlapping correctly. Remember, you can always go back and change this draw order at any time. Okay, so we finished organizing and assigning our parts. If something's not working, you can go back through and check and make sure that the part is assigned to the correct section. And again, you can use this extra file over here of Hiyori and look at how things are organized if something seems like it's not working. Next, what we want to do is create meshes for every single part. Now there are two different ways you can do this. You can either do it by hand or you can just auto mesh everything. It depends on your goals. Are you in a hurry? Do you want to get this done fast and get a quick version out pronto? Or do you want to take your time and really get everything right the first time around? So there's two options we have here. You can either select one thing at a time and like I selected the eyebrow and I can go auto. This is going to create a mesh. So we want to create a mesh on top of every single object preset. I'm just going to do standard and okay, there we go. So this looks decent. There's some fixes I can make. If you want to edit things individually, there is different guides on how you can set these up on the Live2D website. You can also, once again, come in here and look at how how Hayori is set up. So I'm just going to look at this and I, you want to the goal here when you're assigning meshes to every single piece of your character is you want to make sure these triangles are as even as possible. So there are a few different ways you can do this. So you can auto mesh, like I said, or you can do a customized mesh. I would start with an auto so you have a little bit of a base. You can use this minus pen tool right here to get rid of things. So I'm just going to get rid of all the center ones right now. Actually, I'm going to get rid of all of it. And plus, what you want to do is you just want to sort of surround it as best you can. I don't know if there's a specifically right or wrong way to do this, but just do what feels right. Click around it, experiment. Again, you want to make the triangles as even as possible. So I'm just guessing right now. So I connected my main sections on the outside there, and then you can go in with this brush tool and draw through. So you can do something like that, or you can again have more control over it by using your plus or minus. I have not used the lasso or the selection tool specifically, but that could be your mesh right there. If you want to make custom ones to really even out your triangles, if you notice the auto mesh looks a little funky or a little messy for this one. But again, I'm just going to auto mesh everything for this. So again, remember you can go in and do everything specifically to make it as even as possible, or you can auto mesh everything. I'm going to auto mesh everything. I'm going to hold control A. It's going to select everything, or you can just select everything like this, but control A is when I'm clicking. And then you can go ahead and click auto for everything and go to standard. So it'll give everything an auto mesh. Again, you can see there's a lot of messy stuff in here. You could auto mesh everything and then go in and fix it too. But make sure you assign meshes. This is what's going to allow your mesh to be able to move. It's sort of like adding bones. If you have ever done 3D modeling, this is 2D's way of adding bones to your model. So far, we have created a model file. We have organized and assigned our parts over here. We have checked and set up our draw order to make sure everything is on the correct layer. We have created a mesh now for every single piece here. So so that we can maneuver and move our pieces for when we start rigging. Lastly, we're going to generate a texture and you can do this by quick control A to select everything again. 
You can edit texture atlas right here, or you can hit control T. You can do either, or I'm going to hit control T, edit texture atlas. I'm going to do 2048 by 2048. Again, this is not a super important thing. Do what's going to work and you'll see what I mean once we get in there. So I'm going to click OK and it's going to automatically lay out everything. You want to select everything and make sure it's at 100% scale here. So it looks like this says it's at 45 scale. I want this at 100%. If I do 100%, things are not going to fit on there. So I'm going to exit out of this and click yes. I'm going to go back and regenerate my texture atlas and I'm going to do something Something higher. I'm going to go with 8192. Eight, this could cause maybe possibly more lag or something. So this is when you'd want to pay attention to your resolution. For me specifically, I have a pretty good computer, so I don't have to worry about that. So you also want this to be taking up as much space as you want. So I hold shift so nothing warps and make it bigger. But this, as you can see now, is at scale 204. We don't want that. So I'm not going to want to do the 8000 either. I'm going to go ahead and click this again. And we're going to try a 4096 by 4096 and see what that looks like. So I'm going to highlight everything. Let's see what it's at. We got at 95 scale 95 is pretty good i'm not going to mess with it i could bring it up to 100 but this is good enough for me now what you're doing here is you want to make sure that nothing is overlapping that's all you're going to do once you have the automated setup so go ahead and move stuff around you're just going to select it and move it you want to make sure things are not overlapping so just go ahead and zoom in look around i'm going to hold down my middle mouse to move this around and maneuver a bit so I'm going to move these pieces over a bit and I'm going to speed through this again. You just all you're doing here is making sure things are not overlapping with each other. So make sure you pay very close attention to that and just move things accordingly. If you want, you could also scale things a little bit larger to take up as much space as possible. But if you're new to this, I would just focus on separating things so that they are not overlapping. It looks like everything is good to go. I'm going to then click OK and just let it do its thing. Awesome. And now it should all be ready to start rigging. So in the next video, we will focus on rigging. We're probably going to get the face and the eyes, the nose and the mouth done for rotating and moving around. And we'll see how far that goes. And then we can take it to the next point after that. Awesome. So we got a lot of that done just to go over the essentials in the setup one more time. Make sure your Photoshop file is somewhere around if you're doing half body 3000 pixels by 3065. One, we created a file and model during this video. Two, we organized and assigned our parts. Three, we checked and set up the draw order to make sure the layers were going in the right direction. We created a mesh, custom or auto, so you can do custom per every single piece or you can automate every single mesh. And five, we generated a texture atlas with control T. And for any extra important things, we made sure Cubism was at version 3.0 in the upper left-hand corner, which I actually did not fix this version because I had been doing a few different things. But make sure your SDK is at 3.0. You can change it later, it's fine. That should help set up your file to get ready for rigging. We will work on some rigging in the next tutorials. If there's anything specifically you wanna learn how to rig too, feel free to leave a comment down below letting me know what you wanna see rigged. I hope this video is helpful and if you need any one-on-one -on -one time you can set up a appointment with me i charge 30 dollars usd per half hour for working on a project together i'll leave that calendar link down below also if you're not already on my emailing list definitely check that out as well i'll leave that down below for free resources on how to become a better vtuber all right i will see you in the next one thank you so much bye